Hey, I'm Arn with Sybil6.com. Because of the current pandemic, a lot of traditional events are switching over from traditional to online only. And in today's video, we'll explore that. We'll create an event together on Simple6, we'll set our event times, our ticket prices, we'll then connect it with our Square account, and then we'll use the feature inside of Simpletix to email all the attendees an email blast that will include the live streaming link so they can view the webinar online. All right, let's begin. Before we begin creating our event, let's take a look at what the final product should look like. So we have an event page here um, with the event details. If I click register now, I can see all the different webinar or live um, video dates. And each one, um, there's five total, each one has a different um, title. So you know this particular one is about the boil specifically. Um, and you can set different prices as well too. So for the April 22nd event, it's $20 for adults. But if I go to the final event, it's $25. So we'll show you how to set this up right now. Let's dive in. Okay, so after clicking create event, we'll put our event details in here. I'll choose that this is an online or a webinar event. That way you don't have to put in the venue address details. And I'll choose our category. In this case, it's a class and a workshop. Now I'll put my event details in. Now I'll set my event image. I'll click continue. And now we'll set our event date. Now, if our event was just one time, I would just go ahead and choose that one time right here. And it would be um, this date from 6 to 8 p.m. However, if I wanted to have multiple dates and people would have to buy and register tickets for different dates, I would choose the option right here and I would choose specific dates over here. So let's say it starts on the Sunday here and it starts at um, 6 p.m. till 8 and it's going to happen the following day, the following day, and then we're going to skip a day. So I would choose the correct date here and I can add another time just like that. Okay, say so one, two, three, four, five times. I'll click next. And now we'll set our ticket price that would be for all five times. So I'll say the ticket price is called adults and there's 100 as a maximum number of tickets we're allowed to sell. Let's say we're using Zoom and the Zoom Pro account only allows 100. That's totally fine, we'll put 100 there and we will not sell more than 100 tickets. And we'll put in my ticket price here of $25. Now I'd like to pass over my Square fees, my credit card processing fees, my civil tax fees. I can click, simply click here to pass over those fees so the customer will end up paying for those. And um, yep, so I'll click continue. Awesome, so at this point I can connect it with Square, Stripe, PayPal, or Authorize.net. We'll go ahead and close this for now. We'll set that up later. Let's take a look at our event times. So over here are our event times. Now, each of these five times has a different part of the course. And I wanna put that in the title, that way they know it when they're looking at the page. So if I want everyone to know that the um, April 19th class is about sanitization, I can put that in there and click save. And now we'll do that for the next one as well too. We'll click save and I'll go ahead and do that for the remaining um, three times. All right, so it's there for that last time too. And if I wanted to charge a different price for the last time, like make it $30, for example, I totally can do that. Let's talk about one more thing when it comes to the total capacity. So the total capacity could be set here at 100, but you can also set it here too. And the reason why you might set it here is if you had multiple ticket types. So let's say you wanted to offer like a student um, as a special kind of offer for the very last one. You can go ahead and actually leave these both as unlimited because in our logic, we'll always respect this capacity and never sell more than 100. And for the student rate, let's put in $20 there. And I'll click save. So now we created five different event times. Um, we have a different price for the last one. I showed you how to do that. And I also showed you how to add another ticket type. And I also described this event capacity, what that is up here. So we always respect this number, um, but if this one has a lower number, we'll respect that one first. All right, so let's take a look at our event page. If I go over to dashboard, go ahead and close this. I'll copy this link 
and we'll open up our event page now. So here's the event page that we just created. And if you notice, I put in the different, you know, each course, which one, which one is. And um, this information, you can modify at any time. Let me show you how to modify that. If I go over to my um, events and then click event details for this event, you'll see it all right here. So for example, if you want to make these, you know, bold, um, you can totally do that. So feel free to modify this here if you need to. Um, and the last thing I'll show you how to do is how to do an email blast to the attendees so they know how to view the webinar. So we'll first demonstrate using Zoom how to schedule the meeting ahead of time. So I'll click schedule here and I'll put in my event title and this is the very first class called sanitization and I'll schedule the date as well. So it's the 19th at 6 p.m. We have the same time zone over here and it's about two hours long. And if it was actually two hours and 30 minutes, I put 30 minutes in there. And it's not gonna be a reoccurring event. And we'll generate the special meeting link automatically. And I'll go ahead and click schedule here. And now this has been created in Zoom. Um, so I can go ahead and copy all the details here. In our first example, we used Zoom and now we'll use BlueJeans. I just created a brand new account and we'll go ahead and schedule our first meeting. So I'll click here, schedule a meeting. I'll give it a title. And um, the next thing that's really important is setting the right time zone. So I'll click here and it's right now it's specific. I'm gonna switch that over to Eastern. Now I'll put in the right event date, which is the 19th of April at 6 p.m. Now make sure that this time, the end time, gives you enough time to complete because you don't want it to cut you off early. So in this case, I'll go ahead and choose 9 p.m., which gives us an extra 30 minutes. All right, we'll skip over the invite participants. I'll go over to advanced options. We're gonna uncheck use my meeting ID because I want it to be a unique ID. The next feature I'm gonna do is mute participants on entry. That way there's no noise. Also, I'll choose silent participant entry mode. And now we're all set. I'll click schedule meeting. Okay, and here's the meeting that we just created. I'll go ahead and click it. And on the right hand side, there's a view join info. I'll copy that. And now I'll copy this to the clipboard. So when I'm doing the email blast to all the attendees from Civiltix, I'll paste in the details from here. That way that our customers know how to access this live webinar. Now the day before your event, log into your Civiltix site, click your event, and then choose attendee management. And now we're gonna do the email blast to a specific date and time. So you have all the different dates and times here. You're gonna choose a specific date, like to do the email blast and then click email attendees. And you can paste your message in here, which pretty much would be your Zoom link and let people know, you know this is how to get to the meeting. Rather than saying e-tickets for this event, I would say um, like you know, special, special link. Um, so I'd say like you know, special link for like course number one, for example. Um, and don't bother to include e-tickets because you're not really gonna scan them. Um, so yeah, just send out your email just like this. Click the send button on top and it's gonna email everyone the link. And if you're using Zoom the day of the event, just open up Zoom, you'll see your event right here and click the start button to start the Zoom meeting. So if you're curious about the pricing for Zoom, just go to zoom.us and click on the pricing and you'll see the different packages they offer. Um, I would recommend going the pro route. You get up to 100 participants in this route. Now they have another version called webinar on the bottom and that allows you know 100 um, a, a, a panelists to be part of it. You'll see all of their, their pictures, their live video um, when you do this route. This is really designed for webinars. I'd probably recommend this if it's a serious webinar that you're doing. Um, you have the ability to do like polling and qu uh, questions and things like that also directly in it. So the webinar will give you a richer experience. However, maybe if it's a free event and you don't really need all the features, um, the pro account would be fine for you. All right, let's check out another competitor called BlueJeans. Okay, so here's a website for BlueJeans. It's very similar to Zoom. Um, they offer the for the meetings, you can get the pro account, which allows up to 50 participants, where the standard account is up to, um, sorry, 50 for the, for the standard account and 75 for the pro account here. And um, they also offer the events version, which might give you a richer experience where you can start doing polling and Q and A's and things like that. Um, that's $500 per webinar. So it's a lot more expensive. So you might be able to get away with just you know the standard meetings version. 
Um, I'd sort of probably recommend going that route, and um, the Pro account looks pretty good to me. That's the annual price. If you do the monthly price, it'll be $17.49. So that, again, is a 13, about $14, $17 over here. And if I look at the Zoom price, we'll take a look at that as of today. It's $14.99. All right, so thanks for watching our video today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you. Thanks a lot. Bye now.